Yeah. Sorry to interrupt, but it's time. Damasi and Michael just talking tech. The following podcast on the Your Own Pay Podcast Network will contain adult content. Listener discretion is advised. More information about this episode can be found at yourownpay.com. So anything we mention, you can get links to at yourownpay.com forward slash DM48. We're almost to that 50 mark. We're going to have to make some new folders. Yeah, we do. Before we get into it, uh, I think it's worthwhile for us to at least acknowledge the unrest and turbulence that is going on in the country right now. Uh, we are aware of it. We're not ignorant of the facts. We don't want to spend, at least I certainly don't want to spend a ton of time talking about it because I'm frankly kind of a little sick of reading about it and it's not in a careless manner but it's more or less like it's just so much shit going on but we're not ignorant to the fact we do want to acknowledge at least i would like to acknowledge i'm gonna let michael speak for himself because we did not discuss any of this before we started talking at you all i would just like to acknowledge that i do understand the pain of the black community i happen to be a black person myself and i have faced racism myself over the years uh over my 38 years of being on this earth so uh i can completely understand the frustration, the anger, uh, and the need for some sort of outlet. Uh, I would encourage anybody that is listening that has any sort of influence whatsoever or is even involved in protesting to be as peaceful as you possibly can. Uh, There's no point in looting. Uh, I don't agree with the people that are out there looting and stealing and doing destruction just for destruction's sake. Yeah, everybody stay safe as you possibly can. Uh, And be as peaceful as you possibly can. Uh, That's all I really have to say about it. We want to get into the show at some point, but I will let Mike, you know, share his thoughts if he wants to. I don't really have a lot of thoughts. I am in a different position. I have not faced racism in my life. Uh, I I am a white individual and I... I feel it's important to express you the way you're feeling and uh, what you have to say. But as Demasi said, do it in a peaceful means. Because when you when you start to destroy things and you start to to be destructive, then who are you actually helping and what are you actually trying to demonstrate for? Uh, is all I have to say. And I'm thankful that. Our local communities have have been very peaceful in their demonstrations, and uh, it's been it's been a very interesting times that we live in. Twenty twenty, I'm I'm done with it. We're in June. I'm done. Uh, I'd like to move on to twenty twenty one. Unfortunately, that's not an option. So let's uh, stick with what we have now and make the best of it if possible. Uh, So yeah, that's all I got to say. All right. So into the show. Google I.O., have they rescheduled that yet? I have not seen anything about the Android 11 event because they're not calling this one the Google I.O. Oh, they're yeah, calling it the right. Android 11 event for developers. Uh, I have seen that they have 12 or so talks on their website that they're going to go over. I did not see accessibility as one of those talks, but as you and I both know, and I think we've talked about it a couple of times, accessibility in this day and age can just be having the ability to use mainstream products. It doesn't necessarily, I mean, don't get me wrong. I appreciate the fact that, that accessibility is talked about, but a lot of the times just making your software, your apps or your hardware able to be used by most individuals can be accessibility alone. Yeah. And, uh, as you said, we've discussed it a couple of times, both Apple and Google, uh, tend to not really highlight the accessibility as much nowadays because it's it's sort of kind of an assumption that what they're discussing is going to be accessibility related. It's going to be accessible to people. So they don't usually call out specific accessibility aspects or something, or it just becomes a part of whatever the actual talk is. So they may mention accessibility, but it becomes a part of the actual talk versus just, uh, 
you know, them making a, a specific section to strictly talk about accessibility. It's like, well, if we're covering the new features in uh, the messaging app, like, you know, accessibility will maybe be mentioned in that conversation and how it works with, with the different, different accessibility tools. But there's not going to be a specific, we got to talk about accessibility now. It's just a part of the general conversation, which is a good thing because when people roll accessibility into their mainstream products, as you said, like it's, it's a win-win for everybody. So you wanted to talk about LinkedIn on Android. So what is LinkedIn doing that's interesting on Android? So there for a while, LinkedIn was doing kind of what Facebook is doing now and to an extent. So let me give you a quick rundown. So with Facebook on Android, you see your, your story post. So shit. You see your news feed post, news feed story, two totally different things, and you uh, flick past it and you see a actions button that you can double tap on to like or to react to the post or to comment or to share. Or in the case of Facebook ads, which I've kind of been more working on, you can double tap on it, go to the very last option, and then there's an option, I forget the exact name of it, and then there's an option for you to uh, say, no longer show me these ads, and then when you double tap on that, it gives you some questions of why do you not want to see these ads, not relevant, then there's a done button, and then there's a button that says never show me ads from this advertiser again, and you can choose that and then hit done, and then you can start changing up the ads that you see because I kind of started seeing a lot of ads. So Facebook has that button directly past the post and LinkedIn used to have a like post, comment post, share post button after the the entry or the post on it. And today, because I was sharing my Robinhood link on LinkedIn, I'm like, oh, let's check out LinkedIn because I hadn't shared Robinhood over there yet. And I uh, s- noticed that now you can flick through and you're taken directly to the next post. And if you want to like a post or comment on it, or share it or actually click on one of the hashtags in LinkedIn's post. You can use your local contacts menu. I think that's where it is. Go to actions or if you do what I did, set up a gesture specifically for actions on TalkBack and pop that up and then you can interact with that post. So I'm very intrigued by the fact that Microsoft, who owns LinkedIn now, is taking accessibility and improving it not just on iOS, which they had started doing this on iOS, and it was great because iPhone users could quickly browse through LinkedIn, but now I'm starting to see those push over to Android, and uh, it, it makes me feel great that companies are not just focusing on accessibility on iOS, and I'm observing that they're starting to focus focus more on accessibility all around, including Android, because Android users uh, are out there, like like we exist. And in the US, iOS might be the biggest uh, uh, platform used. But I know a lot of people in India that use Android. So um, yeah, that's that's what I had to say about LinkedIn and, and their improvements that they have. I've not played much more around on there. I do have it installed. I've got 184 notifications I have to go through. It uh, looks like 72 connection requests. So I'll be playing with it a little bit more over the next couple of days. Yeah, I need to uh, reinstall LinkedIn uh, simply because, uh, well, one, I need to spend more time over there. I need to start investing some social media time there. Uh because I feel like that'll be more beneficial and the connections there will be more relevant. Uh, yeah, I, have, I had noticed a lot of the changes coming to iOS and it seems to sort of be that they were doing a gradual upgrade. So like it wasn't one huge change. They've been slowly in- implementing uh, new features, sort of the way that Audible has been doing on iOS. Also, Audible on iOS has gotten a lot more savvy with their, their uh, one, their layout is different. I have not actually looked at the Android app to see if this is true, but on iOS now you have different ways of uh, viewing your library. So you can view it by uh, genre or by uh, status or whether you have read the book, the book is unread, you're reading the book. But they've also implemented actions, finally, voiceover action, rotor actions uh, for books in your library. So like if something's downloaded, you can remove it or quickly view the details. Now if they would just hide the stupid buttons off to the side, uh, it would make the experience a little bit better. I wanted to ask this question. Uh, how are you feeling today about social media? Just in general first and then where are you spending the most of your time at now? So in general, I'm feeling like social media is a time kill. 
Um, when I get up, I run that good morning action that I, we talked about in the previous episode. This opens up Pocket Cast and I start playback of a podcast in there. I need to figure out how to automate that process too, so I don't have to hit more options and then play all from there. But that's that's a, a to come soon feature. Uh, and then I typically will admit that I jump into Facebook and start going through my news feed. Demasi may know that I suspended my Facebook account for about two days, and that's as long as that lasted. <laughs> and then I went back. So right this second, I'm spending a lot of time in Facebook. And I want to change that mainly because Facebook is the same thing over and over and over from different people. And it's getting to be old and boring and and repetitive. So I'm starting to transition more into Twitter. I've been using that a lot because I've been interacting with the AMI team over there. And that's where they primarily interact at. And then now that I've seen these improvements on LinkedIn, I want to start spending more time over there because my biggest issue with LinkedIn was, well, if I want to go through my my news feed for say, I don't want to flick four times to get to the next post before I can uh, go through it. And it's just a waste of my time. But now these improvements have been made. I, I, I may very well see myself spending a little bit more time on LinkedIn to see what I can find over there because there are some amazing uh, accessibility individuals who who are in the community that may be interested in content or offerings that I have. And I'm definitely interested in learning more about what they're doing and, and what type of improvements they're making on the tools that they're working on. And lastly, it's a good place to look for a job. Like, uh, I need a job. <laughs> a quick side note about jobs. I put in one, two, three, four, five applications uh, earlier this week at different companies, mainly because I haven't been told when by Coastal Media is going to rehire me. And I don't know about you, but I really don't like just sitting around not doing nothing. And I got to get away from these kids for a little bit. Like, I'm glad we're recording because they know not to bother me. Uh, uh, 10, 12, and 13-year-old boys can can sure be a handful of times. And uh, I'm thankful that I have Nicholas here. Don't get me wrong, but uh, you got to you got to get away from it for a little bit and have your own time. So I put in five applications. I have a job interview tomorrow with the FCR, which those who may know, I worked for them back in 2017, 2018. And because of the situation we're in right now with uh, COVID-19, they are looking for at-home representatives, but those could transition into an in-contact center opportunity in the next six months if everything goes okay. And then I also have a chat with someone from a company called uh American Insurance Life or something like that. It's for life insurance. And I don't know that I want to go through, uh, you're selling life insurance to people. I don't know if I want to go through the process of becoming licensed in Oregon, but it's an opportunity. And what it tells me is if you're truly looking to get a job, two out of five people who've contacted me for an interview, that's that's not bad odds for a time when, what was it, 38 million people are out of employment right now? Yeah. That so. is a valid point. Uh, and I think now for people uh, in the dis- you know, disabled community, it's probably one of the best times to be looking for a job because more people are having to work from home. Like there's not an option in some cases still. Uh, but also because of the shutdown, uh, more companies, I think, are now more predisposed to accept a work from home position uh, or worker versus the, you know, no, you got to be in here physically uh, simply because one, again, we don't know what's going to happen with the virus, uh, and how things are going to go there. Uh, but because they were kind of forced into the situation, they figured out, I feel like for a lot of people that it wasn't such a bad deal. People could still be productive uh, while working from home and not being present physically. Demasi, do you use Google Docs on iOS? Um, very rarely. Uh, the reason being, and I'm actually trying to figure out a way to use the Google uh, Docs API to be able to jot stuff down in drafts yeah. and then automatically send that to a specific doc, uh, which would have yielded more notes in here from me had I gotten that problem solved <laughs> but no i don't use it very much on ios uh simply because it's a little janky uh 
especially when editing. Uh, editing can be a little a little weird. Uh, mm-hmm. I haven't tried it out since the last update that they did for iOS. I do have it installed because I will very quickly jump in there, and review something, uh, or read something, uh, or on occasion create a new doc. But I don't use it probably honestly as much as I would like to, simply because the editing experience has been kind of hit or miss. Uh, it's 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 a little disturbing and uh aggravating when you're editing inside of a document and then your focus shifts somewhere else and now you're back at the top of the dock and now you got to get all the way back to the bottom or wherever you were actually editing so (laughs) not nearly as much as i would like to i tend to stick to using it in chrome on the mac funny thing about that with me my experience for google docs has been the opposite. I've had no problem with editing Google Docs inside of Docs uh, on Android. I can go in and, you know, copy text or select text, which when, once you get comfortable selecting text on Android, that's that's a pretty straightforward process. My, my problem that I had with Google Docs was that I couldn't read documents. Like mm. you were, and this comes from my flicking experience. So you would jump into a dock and flick through and you're like, I don't see any text here. But then if you touch the center of the screen, you would see the Google doc and the text to the doc. And I'm like, I, I can't get this to work. I can't read this document. Well, today when I was putting together this document, which I did start in, uh, well, I, we started this on something else. I don't remember what, but I edited it on Android and I started typing in some ideas. And, uh, one of the ideas in here that I have is frustration with Google docs on Android. And then I hit done and I stepped away for a minute and then I came back and I found the text of the document because I wasn't in edit mode anymore. And I had been editing and my granularity was set to words and I started flicking to the right and it started reading to me word by word in the Google doc. And I'm like, wait a minute, this is interesting. So then I switched granularity to lines and was able to read line by line in that Google doc document. Now, and this was by flicking to the right. When I switched to default, it default and switched me back over to read the, or to jump through the buttons inside Google Docs. So if I touch the screen, you hear text, and then you switch granularity to words, lines, characters, paragraphs, whatever you want, and you can read by that through the Google Doc. So now I'm not quite frustrated, which is why I added discoveries while creating this Google Doc that eliminate my frustrations with Google Docs, because, well, I figured out that you can actually read a Google Doc. Touch the middle of the screen, get your focus into the Doc, and then switch to a character's word lines or paragraphs don't read by default because that doesn't work i have not tried to read all once i've done that but i I suspect that'll work now once you switch your granularity because i learned that if you have your granularity set to headings in chrome or edge or now i'm using duckduckgo uh for the browser on android uh and you do a read all and you're in headings, it'll read all the headings and skip over everything else. So I suspect read all should read just fine in the Google Doc uh, once you set your granularity. So that that's what I've discovered. So now I'm, I'm comfortable with Google Docs. I think I'm going to play with it more. You can add shortcuts. I, th- I believe you can add some widgets or shortcuts to your home screen so you can quickly... A- Ooh. Ooh, I gotta look into that. But you should be able to set up some ways that you can quickly append to the end of a Google Doc document or or some aspects like that. So I'm gonna play around with it a little more and start getting more into Google Docs now that I'm comfortable with it. Yeah, that that is my intent. Uh, that's why I said one. I'm trying to, uh, and I, I would have sworn I had a drafts action. It probably was back in drafts four that would that that were some Google Docs actions like you know a pin to end of Google Doc, etc. Uh, but that's mostly because oftentimes I will add stuff to drafts uh, mm-hmm. first because either I'm doing it for my watch or it's just like you know on the Mac is sort of like a scratch pad for me in a lot of ways. Uh, but being able to go through and select stuff and say, okay, add this to the DM40, you know, the DM doc uh, will be helpful because uh, I do have links. And I was like, oh, I need to add those to the doc. And it's like, man, I got to go through each link and copy it. And, uh, <laughs> nobody wants to do that crap. Uh, I want to back up to something. So I do have a couple of things I want to go over to. Uh, I want to back up to this thing that you just casually sort of mentioned, which is uh, you're using DuckDuckGo for your browser on Android now. Uh, one, why, not that I have an objection to DuckDuckGo, but what causes you to actually switch? And is it a temporary thing? Is it just a testing um, thing? Is it, uh, 
it's a they mentioned it me. on all about android and ah. i want to find out if it works and it does work so i'm like oh this is kind of nice uh there isn't any specific reason for it but yeah yeah i have tried it out as well as uh, it was in the app arena yeah i, I actually caught that episode uh, yeah i've used DuckDuckGo's browser on android i have not used it on ios but i have used uh firefox focus on both platforms uh, which is a very similar deal mm. to the DuckDuckGo uh browser uh, where, you know, you can very quickly wipe your browsing history. Uh, it's basically set up for you to kind of not necessarily be in always browsing mode. I mean, always private browsing mode, but it's, it's set up to very quickly okay. forget what you were doing uh, and start over. So I've used those two. Uh, I'm still slightly pissed with Firefox as a whole, though. Uh, Did you see this lawsuit to Google about incognito mode? Have you seen that yet? Uh, I have not seen one recently, but if it's like the last one that they had, it's because Google doesn't quite hide everything or something like that when you're in incognito mode. So when you're in incognito mode, the data that you search for, the data that you, you have in your browser is wiped from your browser. But because websites such as Your Own Pay, actually, I don't have Google on there, but uh, some websites have Google Analytics, what people are saying is Google is not actually giving you private browsing because these websites can track when you go there. Well, yeah, they can. And if you read the little help article that you can go to, it says that the, the other people can track you. Uh, your data just isn't saved on your device while you're searching. Like. To me, it makes sense, but I guess I kind of understand why people are, are disturbed by it, kind of. Well, that comes down to a function of the websites, though, right? Not the, because Google, I mean, if read anybody's paying attention. Policies. Hmm? I said, read the privacy policies for the sites you're visiting. Yeah, uh, and also pay attention to what's going on in the industry. Like, Google has been actively uh, tweaking the way that private browsing or incognito mode works in Chrome to attempt to foil ways that people were trying to track you across your private browsing as well as your your regular browsing. Uh, also, people should pay attention to the industry because Google has been actively trying to uh, tweak the way that incognito mode works, not only to ensure that you know, there's no private data leakage or anything like that. There's no way for people to track you while you're in incognito mode, but also to foil things like uh, the freemium uh, news sites like the New York Times is uh, I don't really know of any other. I'm not specifically picking on them. I just happen to know that the New York Times is one of these sites where you can read, you know, so many articles for free a month and then they tell you, you know, everything else is behind the paywall. And what would happen to people in private browsing mode in just about any browser is they would go to the New York Times to read an article and they would say, well, oh, we have detected that you're in incognito mode. We're not going to let you read our article. But mm -hmm. you may be in incognito mode not to get around their five articles per month barrier, but because the thing that you're looking up, maybe you're on your work computer or something like that, and you don't want people to know that you read this article for whatever your reasons may be. Like, I don't, don't want to get into the whole, you know, why would you do it? But you have your reasons for being in, in, our, in incognito mode. Could be you were browsing and clicked on a link that got you there. But Google has been trying to foil that because they're more interested in keeping your data private so even the fact that you're in incognito mode they don't want necessarily exposed to websites like they don't want the website to be able to determine that you're in incognito mode so they've been actively trying to uh work those kinks out uh the fact of the matter is when it comes down to it like if somebody is really dead set on tracking you there are ways for them to track you they can aggregate a bunch of information and mostly kind of figure out who you are mm -hmm. so if you go to a website and they're using analytics and uh you know maybe your browser maybe your system is being fingerprinted so it's not just whether or not they're able to store a cookie that they can retrieve the next time you go there because you're in private browsing mode but uh maybe the plugins that you have or add-ons or, or extensions you have in your browser are being exposed uh maybe the configuration of your system your ip address uh, etc. There's lots of ways for people that people are using to attempt to fingerprint 
and uh, aggregate data about people across different services. The fact that Facebook shows up on a lot of these pages, like the little Facebook buttons, the like buttons mm-hmm. or whatever. Uh, again, not to specifically pick on Facebook, but I know they're one of the more egregious uh, people here. Oftentimes, they're able to pull data from your private browsing and match that with your public browsing because your behavior doesn't necessarily change when you're browsing the web in incognito mode. You may be doing it just for the simple fact of I'm logged in on this site. I don't really want to log out, but I need to log in with a different user account or I need to browse this page without it showing my account info. Uh, which I often do. Like I, you know, was doing testing early. Like I don't want to log out of my Google account, my main Google account, my G Suite account to do something. I, if I need to go fill out a form and I need to use my gmail.com account, I will open up a private tab uh, and go mm-hmm. do it mm-hmm. simply because I don't want to log out, but also don't want the data to get mixed in with my G Suite account because that's what will happen. And then people get confused. You're like, you don't have access to this. I was like, Actually, I do. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. I'm just not in the right account to give yeah, me access. Uh, but people sue for it. You know, the weirdest shit, man. This is, uh, so what are your thoughts on the 4A and the 4A XL rumored device that they have now canceled? I am not interested in them at this present time because we're pretty phone savvy. Like we've got all of our phones that we really need. Uh, we have a spare 3A because Mallory's not using the 3A anymore. She's upgraded. And so I'm not that intrigued by it. If I were to get a new phone, I would probably look at the 4A if it was available. When I upgrade though, I want to get a phone with face unlock. So I would be interested in it if it had face unlock i'm not really interested in in another touch id phone because i i want to be able to pick my phone up and have it unlocked and ready to go versus nicholas picking it up and it not recognizing him and he can't unlock it unless he had my same face which apparently a lot of people say he looks like me and facebook's face recognition when he's in a picture says michael babcock and i'm like no that's not me facebook Have you looked well, into the NVIDIA Shield at all? Nope. I was going to do that, and then we edited the episode, and I'm like, oh, shit, I was going to look into that, and I never looked into it. Uh, I, I want to find out what Google's doing, because if I can get a direct Google Android device, as, as rumored, I would love to have a Google Android dongle, because theoretically it would give you the ability to cast for when you needed to cast or if you wanted to cast um as i said in the previous episode it's not an easy enough concept for me to explain to most especially the kids i'm I'm sure they'd pick it up uh but mallory as well because you have to start playback in the app and then hit the button and then choose your tv and then it's on the tv uh versus just jumping in front of the tv grabbing a remote and browsing things so I would like cast, but they wouldn't. And I, I feel this Google stick, Android stick, may may give me best of both worlds. But I will look at the NVIDIA Shield because I probably won't buy it. Uh, I, 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 I would wait and see what Google does with their potential new product uh, before making any serious buying decision. Uh, like you, casting is great i actually thought it was super great when it came out because to me it was better than airplay uh when Mm. when chromecast first came out simply because i could start something cast it over to the tv and then i could walk away like i could literally leave the house and that would not interrupt the show whereas with you know airplay doesn't work that way still doesn't work that way Mm. Uh, your airplane so it, it ties up the device that you're airplaying from uh so you can still take and receive phone calls but or make and receive phone calls I think with AirPlay, uh, I don't know if that has been changed in AirPlay too. And AirPlay one for me, you no. Know, if somebody called, I could interrupt the show because it was basically interrupting what was on your screen. So no, ah, uh, yeah, okay. it, it it worked, but I always felt like you wanted to have like a dedicated device for AirPlay. So use an iPad or you know AirPlay from the Mac or something like that. I very rarely would AirPlay anything from my phone uh, unless I put it in like AirPlay mode or, or Do Not Disturb or something. Uh, whereas the casting was great, but I can realize the issues as well for other people with, with casting and it not being you know familiar enough. First of all, and then there's not a lot of consistency across apps uh yeah 
That is true. You know, some apps have the cast button like right there, bam. You know, especially the Google apps. But then you get into maybe Netflix and it's kind of hidden. Like you got to start playing the show and then you got to tap this little thing and then tap the cast and then tap the TV you want. And then some apps simply just don't have the cast ability. That too, uh, which is a so, huge problem. Uh, we'll see this fall. Like let's, let's plan to retouch this in October or November because Google typically has an October event. Uh, so that's where I suspect if they're going to release a Android TV, Google TV box dongle, whatever you want to call it, that should be when I'm guessing it'll happen. Hopefully I will be interested in it as well, just as a alternative device. Uh, and just to see what the experience is like, uh, I am, like I said, I, I am fairly, uh, happy with the progression of, of Android. Still haven't checked out Android 11 at all yet. Uh, so, yeah, anything new for you tech-wise? Uh, I did pick up some Power Beats Pros. Wait, did I have these last time we recorded? No, you had them. We haven't talked about them. Uh, Not while recording. We've talked about them on the phone. but. Uh, so, yeah, I did buy some new uh, Power Beats Pro, uh, I guess is how you say it. Anyway, got some of those. Uh, primarily, well, one, they were on sale over Labor Day. And I was at the point that I was exploring Bluetooth headphones options. Uh, mm-hmm. I didn't really want to spend a ton of money on anything unless it was some Apple. The reason I chose to go with the Beats over the AirPod Pros is that the Beats give me about nine hours, nine to ten hours of battery life per earbud uh and the charge ability you know is about 24 hours of time uh before you need to re- recharge everything so the, the charging case gives you you know extends that battery life to 24 hours uh which for me a lot of times means i can get you know a whole day uh, or more if I'm switching off earbuds, which is what I often do sometimes. One, because it's kind of become habit from dealing with the other wireless buds that I actually had. And two, oftentimes I don't need both ears plugged up. Uh, like it's not good to have both ears plugged up. So I always walk around with one earbud in. I have a cheap pair of Bluetooth or Walmart branded on ONN earphones, and they've got a cord across that sits on the back of my neck. And then I usually have the right one in. So describe to me the Power Beats Pro because I don't I don't know anything about them. So here's the very strange thing uh, about these earbuds. First of all, my impression of them is turned out not to be correct. Uh, although had I listened to David Woodbridge's description of them as a blind person, I would have had a much better idea what they actually looked like. So the case is a sort of rounded square, but it's a big rounded square. The, the, the best, uh, sort of, uh, have you ever seen a crystal or a white castle burger? No, no. Okay. Uh, cause, cause T was like, oh, it looks like a crystal chick. Uh, it does. <laughs> Uh, but it's not a flat case. Uh, it is, it's, it's a okay. square shape. So if you're holding it flat mm-hmm. or sitting it flat on the table, it is a, a, a rounded square shape. So by rounded square, what I mean is like the corners are rounded off. There's not sharp edges. Right. But it's also sort of curvy going up and down as well. So it's not a flat okay. on the top, flat on the bottom. Right. Yeah. Uh, and there's a opening. You open it from the front and the top lifts up and you have the two earbuds inside. And they are laying, so the way that the actual earbud itself looks, there's an ear hook and it's all connected together. So the ear hook is not a removable piece. Uh, so the ear hook loops around into the actual body of the headphone itself. Uh, on the headphone piece itself, there's a ear piece that goes inside of your ear, like a little bud that goes inside of your ear. The ear hook will hook mm-hmm. behind your ear. At the back, so toward the back of your ear, if it's in your ear, there is a play pause slash answer hang up button. Uh, there's okay. a volume rocker switch on the side uh, of the earbud and you can adjust the ear hooks so they're they're kind of flexible but the earpiece is flexible uh we will put a link in the show notes to david woodbridge's description i feel like he did a much better job than i just did but overall they're they're comfortable uh they're light so i can have them in and not not feel uncomfortable or or, or feel like i need to constantly adjust them or anything like that uh 
sound quality seems pretty good. I've held on to most of the phone calls I've had since I got them over the Bluetooth earphones. Uh, and they seem to work out well for that as well. I've noticed some, some glitchiness with connection, uh, for it. So one reason I wanted the Apple earbuds, you know, whether that be AirPod Pros or whatever, is because once you pair them with an iPhone, for example, to start, well, now they're connected to your iCloud account. So you can now connect to your watch automatically or your Mac or any other Apple device that you have, including Apple TV. That intrigues me because it means I'm not constantly doing that dance when I do want to switch devices and use my earbuds for something else. I got to unpair from this thing and then repair with that thing and then, you know, keep doing that little dance. That can be annoying. But what I have noticed is that the phone seems to, first of all, the phone seems to dominate the connection. Uh order of operations so if i deliberately switch over to using my watch and you know send the audio out through the earbuds on the watch if i pick up my phone or if my phone lights up for any reason that makes voiceover speak on the phone they automatically retake control of the earbuds uh not super happy about that because uh, i was trying to test out overcast on the watch because i finally got a pair of bluetooth earbuds that i don't have to manually pair to the watch just to try to check out the app uh, so try to listen to a podcast on my wrist and yeah, somebody calls and now the audio is coming from the phone. A few little things like that. Uh, occasionally with the iPhone, I have had it happen enough that it's annoying and I'm thinking of like resetting the earbuds, unpairing them and they're doing an the entire repair. Uh, I'll be flicking around on the iPhone and all of a sudden I'll lose voiceover. Uh, the phone is still active, like nothing has stopped working, but voiceover will just stop, uh, well, I take that back. Audio will stop coming out of the earbuds. I no longer hear audio in the earbuds. And then it'll come back. Uh, sometimes I have to take it out and put it back in. Sometimes it'll come back by itself. So little oddities. I uh, feel like it's probably a software issue. Probably. And should get fixed in the eventual future. Uh, uh, yeah, so we will link to that. Because I, I think... David does a good job at, well, I know David does a good job at just explaining technology. I think I skipped over that one because I'm like, oh, I'm not in the Apple ecosystem, so I don't need to listen to this. Mm -hmm. I wonder how efficient they are on Android. I suspect they work just like a Bluetooth pair, wouldn't they? Yeah, they do. Or have you not tried? Uh, okay. I haven't tried it personally myself yet, but I have read other uh, articles of people who have uh, paired them to an Android device or, or a Windows computer or something like that, and they just work like mm -hmm. regular Bluetooth. Uh, they do have all the modern Bluetooth things, so the Bluetooth 5, uh, they have the Bluetooth LE, uh, a couple of nice features that are nice about them, and it's not really exclusive to Apple's earbuds. Uh, if you take one out of your ear, it will automatically pause your audio. That may be an Apple ah. Apple feel feature yeah. but if they are if you're not actively using them so say i take one out of my ear lay it down on the table uh after a certain amount of time they go into automatic sleep mode that i know for certain is not a apple specific feature because i've had bluetooth okay. earbuds in the past that did that uh they would take them out and let them drape around your neck and you use them for five minutes they would go into low power mode which means they're not just draining battery i think short term uh i think i'm gonna keep them i, I think i'm happy with them uh i don't find myself mostly because the switching devices is not as simple as i would like it to be uh mm -hmm. so i don't find myself using them at the mac as much as i thought i would uh, I have used them with the Mac, but I don't find myself using them quite as much as I had anticipated, uh, simply because the whole switching devices is, is, is a little annoying uh, at times. So I may be at the computer and have them paired to the Mac, and then I get up and go to the kitchen, and it's like, oh, I got to go through the whole dance of taking my phone out, open up this yeah. control center, do this, and then switch the route. And it's like, it is, you know, look, it's the first um, you know, it's definitely a first world problem, right? It's not a major <laughs> issue, right. it's, it's right. like, especially with the shit going on in the world, COVID-19 and everything else. But it's annoying. Yeah. It's super annoying. Uh, I am glad I got them. I think that because I have gotten the So the earbuds, the wireless earbuds I was using before, which I will attempt to find a link to if I can find them uh, mm -hmm. to put in the show notes. They were very small, compact earbuds. So basically, you would stick it in your ear and that's the earbud like there was no it had like the little uh silicone piece that will hook into the the, the in top part of your inner ear 
but they were uh, they, they just sat in your ear. So there was no part of the earbud actually outside of your ear, like going around your ear uh-huh. or any of that. So for that reason, I'm having to kind of adjust to the size of these. Uh, I think all, all things equal, if the AirPod Pros had had the battery life that I initially thought they did, which was eight hours, uh, I probably would have bought those had they also been on sale uh, because they are smaller. Uh, but right. battery life for me was more important because, as I tell people oftentimes, uh, when you are a screen reader user <laughs> of a mobile device, you're constantly streaming audio to your Bluetooth headset. Yep. Whereas a sighted person that only uses the uses Bluetooth with a device, they're only streaming audio when they're streaming audio. So if they're listening to music, exactly. a book, a podcast, and watching YouTube, a blind person, you're constantly streaming audio because the screen reader is talking mm-hmm. and it's coming through your earbuds. That is an audio stream. So you're battery Assuming life everything's suffers. working correctly. Yes. Assuming everything is working correctly. <laughs> Nice. Well, I appreciate that feedback. Probably in in the next month or so, I'm going to pick up some more. I'm looking at both the Echo Buds and the Google Pixel Buds. So I'll probably pick up a pair of those and let people know my thoughts on them in the near future. If you want to drop me some money, uh, well, go ahead and just email me some money. You can email me money with any of your favorite apps. I'll take it. I'll, I'll set up an account with that money app if I have <laughs> <laughs> Uh, anything else you got? Cause I think I have, I think that's about all I have right now. Well, that's all I have in the Google doc. We appreciate all of your feedback. Don't forget that you can give us feedback by connecting with us on Twitter at your own pay.com forward slash DM 48. Uh, and he's on Twitter at Demasi, D-A-M-A-S-H-E, and I'm on Twitter at Payone, P-A-Y-O-W-N. And probably you can find me on LinkedIn. I think you can find him on LinkedIn, too. Yeah, I'm on LinkedIn. I'm Demasi everywhere. <laughs> we'll chat with you guys in a couple weeks. You've been listening to Your Own Pay Podcast. If you've enjoyed today's episode, visit yourownpay.com slash cast for exclusive content and to contact us today. We're eager to hear your thoughts and about how you're making this podcast your own. Thanks for listening. We'll be back soon. The Your Own Pay Podcast, yourownpay.com.